Hi, and welcome to Lunchtime Prayer Power. I'm Deidre Banks. Today, we're talking about or praying for the prophetic insight and warnings to come forth to God's people. And we know that God can speak to anyone. God warned Pharaoh in a dream about the famine that was going to play, take place. And there's other warnings in scriptures to those that were not believers in Jesus Christ or those that were not of the Lord, so to speak. But we want to walk with God in relationship because we will get more prophetic intelligence. We'll get more warnings out of relationship, out of walking with him as Noah walked with God. We see in Genesis 6, 13, through 15 that God warns Noah. Noah was an upright man in that time, the only one. Verse 13, so God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits cubits wide and 30 cubits high. So God has given him the warning and he's given him the instruction. We want to get the fullness of the warning and the instruction because a lot of times we'll see people run ahead. They're telling us, oh, there's going to be a famine. Oh, there's going to be a disaster. And there's no instructions that can create fear and it's irresponsible as believers. Now, if God is not giving you the instruction, just said, warn the people, I'm gonna come forth with an instruction later, then that's up to God. But we wanna make sure that we are spending our time in our prayer closet, that we're praying through it ourselves first. So many times we're not praying it through first, but we're quick to run to tell everybody else. We wanna stay in our prayer closet praying through it ourselves and some things you'll never share with other people because it's for you to pray and you can shut it down yourself and God's just saying I want you to pray I want you to be faithful I want you to stand in the gap and intercede prophets are praying people we are called to be praying if they be prophets let them pray we want to be obedient with that we also want to look at in scripture when God warned Abraham of his destruction to Sodom and Gomorrah why is he warning us because he wants us to pray He doesn't want these things to happen. He loves us. And if there's a way to stop it, he's telling us so that we can intercede, we can stand in the gap. And man, some things are just going to happen either way. I want to ask God, Lord, is this going to happen either way? You still want to stand and pray, but Lord, is this going to happen either way? Stand and pray, get the fullness of the warning and don't release the warning in fear, but God is a God of hope. So get the fullness. Where's the hope in this warning? Yes, there's a famine uh, in the end times. We're promised that there's going to be famine, but what? We also promise that the righteous will be spared from these things. So for example, famine, we're going to have food and there's going to be a light in Goshen as for there was with the children of Israel. There's light in Goshen. So as these plagues were coming upon the Egyptians, the Israelites were spared. So there needs to be hope with the prophetic words that we're releasing. If there's a warning, we need to release that with the hope that God is giving. Amen. There's hope. There's mercy. There's redemption. God is the God of hope. And we see that with the, even the Babylonian captivity that that was prophesied uh, by Jeremiah for the Israelites, there was also redemption that was prophesied by him as well. So we want to do both. We want to do both. So let's see this Genesis 18, 17 through 19. Then the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. So God is saying Abraham will surely become a great nation. What I've chosen him. So he's talking to Abraham in this instance out of relationship. Again, God can speak to anyone. He gave Pharaoh the dreams about the famine. And again, there's other instances in scripture, but we are going to hear more out of relationship and we love God. We're not just talking to him so that he can warn us and give us prophetic intelligence. We love him. We want to do relationship with him. You're not just going to spend time with your spouse because you want them to give you $5. You're spending time with your spouse because you love them. You're not just spending time with your friends because you want to get something from them, right? You enjoy them. You want to do life with them. You want to have uh, engage in fellowship with them. And that's what we want to do with the Lord. We want to see him as a friend. We're a friend of him and he's also our father. And we have we honor and respect him and his role in our lives, knowing that we are meant to do life with him. And what a great person to do life with. And Amen. A great being to do life with. And we are blessed 
to be able to walk with him, that he even considers us worthy enough to do that. He's an amazing God. So we're going to pray through this because we want to pray for prophetic insight and warnings for God's people to receive, especially in this time and this hour, that God is going to show us things in dreams and visions. You're a dreamer. Even if you're not a dreamer, you can pray and ask God to unlock that. God is going to speak to you how he wants to speak to you. But if you ask for bread, he will not give you a stone. And so God's going to speak to you the way that he wants to But rest assured, if you ask for him to speak to you in dreams, he can speak to you in dreams. So ask for these things from God that he'll speak to you and that you'll get the messages that God wants you to receive so you can warn others, so you can encourage them, edify, exhort. So we want to do the will of the Lord. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you are a God who warns us. You give us prophetic intelligence. You give us dreams and visions. You speak to us your word and you enlighten us. You encourage us. And we thank you, God, that your Holy Spirit is uh, leading us and guiding us into all truth. We thank you, Father God, that you are a restorer, that you're restoring the prophetic movement where so much has gotten in and there's been ill-gotten leaves and there's been fruit for false prophets. We ask you, Father God, to forgive us, Lord, and restore, restore, restore the gift of prophecy to the church. There's some already operating in this. Yes, we see many going forth in the gift of prophecy, and some are prophets. But we ask you, Father God, to pour this out upon us, Lord, that there will be more who prophesy. There will be more who speak your word to encourage, edify, and comfort others, to warn them, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you are showing us things to come. You want to warn us. You want us to pray. You want us to enter seed. You want us to go forth. And so we ask you, Father God, to help us in this way. We thank you, Lord, that you are speaking. We ask you to open our eyes to see our ears to hear, remove any hindrances, any biases that are uh, hindering us from hearing accurately what you want us to do in this hour. We pray, Father God, uh, for the government, that there will be prophetic people in the government. There will be people on the religion mountain, Father God, hearing your voice as the church is there and there's others that are not, it's not only Christianity, but we ask you, Father God, to restore your bride to hear accurately in this hour. And yes, there's some already hearing accurately, Lord. We thank you that there's a true prophetic rising and there's already been some that are operating in the true prophetic, more true than false. But we ask you, Father God, to restore and that even some false uh, will turn around, Father God. We pray for mercy mercy for the false, mercy for those that have been spreading lies in your name, mercy for those who have spoken when you have not spoken, mercy for those that have said things in in dishonesty and greed, Lord. We pray and we ask you right now, Father God, to help us along the way. Help us, Father God, to hear clearly from you. Help us, Lord, to operate in the capacity and not to run ahead of you, not to speak when you've not spoken, not to say something is from you when it's really of our own opinion. We ask you, Father God, to heal, 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 heal right now we pray for this upcoming election we pray for the god for those that are speaking into this election uh, for those that are hearing from you on this father god we pray lord for your word to go forth we pray for the god for your encouragement we pray for your divine words to go forth in this hour to edify exert comfort and warn your prophetic people we ask you also father god for insight instruction that we would get understanding and all that getting that we would get understanding that we would know exactly what to do that we would stay in our prayer class it, that we would stay with you and sup at your table. Help us to be about relationship. Help us not to be just about getting the word and running off, but help us to stay and get the fullness of your presence, to get the fullness of you because you're a good God. You're a friend. You call us friend. And we thank you, Lord. We want to walk with you as Noah walked with you, as Enoch walked with you. We want to be people that are in a divine relationship and fellowship with you, that we're asking you questions, that we're doing life with you, that we're getting our information from you, Lord. We thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. We thank you, Lord, that you are encouraging us and you're strengthening us in this hour. You are restoring the bride. We're waking up and we're being transformed. You're transforming our heart through the Holy Spirit. You're removing those things that hinder love and you are refreshing us in this hour. You're washing us by the water of the word and you're giving us fresh revelation. We thank you, Lord, for the dreams and visions coming forth. We thank you, Father God, for the divine information, for the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might. We thank you, Lord, for the understanding that's coming forth to your bride, the greater revelation of your love, the greater revelation of your power, the greater revelation of you, Lord, and who you are in this hour. We thank you, Father God, that you're speaking. Help us to listen. Help us to listen to your words. Help us not to run ahead, not to lag behind, but to go forth mightily in this hour with our sword held high. We thank you, Lord, for the prophetic giftings coming forth forth, even to the children. Yes, Lord, that the children would prophesy, that the children would speak forth, that the old men would have visions and dreams, and that all would speak forth. (coughs) Excuse me. 
your word as you give us utterance, Lord. Help us to train up the children in the way that they should go. Help us to train them uh, in the gifts of prophecy. Help them to train them in the office of the prophets. Help us to train them, Lord, in the fivefold ministries, evangelists, apostles, prophets, teachers, and, and pastors. Help us, Father God, to train in this hour, Lord. Help us to equip the body of Christ and to train them in the way that you've called us to go forth. Help us to be students of your word and forgive us, Father God, for laying us sound the foundation. Help us to be solid like a rock. Help us to be rooted and grounded in you. Help us to speak your word accurately, 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 Lord. Remove any falsities from us. Remove any greed. Remove any slander. Remove anything that's not like you, Lord, because we want to war effectively. We want to rise up unified in Christ. We want to go forth full of the spirit, Lord. And so we thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in this hour. We thank you, Lord, for the great exploits. We thank you, Father God, for your word. Your word, your word, your word is coming forth mightily, a lamp into our feet, a light into our path. And we thank you, Lord. And we know that the prophetic word is not in par with scripture, but we ask you, Father God, to speak, Lord, speak for your servants are listening. Speak, Lord. Speak to us right now, Father God. And some are hearing for the first time. And we thank you, Lord, for opening their ears to hear your voice, to know you because you are speaking in this hour. So help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is good. I'm saying that again. Prophecy is not on par with scripture. Now the word and the spirit should agree. The Holy Spirit, the word that's being spoken forth, but prophecy is not on par with scripture. So we got to stay rooted and grounded in the word of God. So we see a lot of flaky stuff because it's not rooted in the word and the, the prophecy should point people back to Jesus, not to ourselves, not to our pocketbooks, but point them to Jesus. Amen. The author and finisher of our faith. He is the cornerstone of the church. Amen. And so we need to point people to him and we are going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed as we point people to Christ, as we win souls, as we do the work that we've been called to do. God is so good. It's worth it to lay our lives down for this. Each and every day we come to him. We pick up our cross daily. We deny ourselves. And Watch Mani has a book about salvation of the soul. It's an awesome book. I'm still reading it, uh, but it's really, really great. I encourage you uh, if you want to go deeper in the discussion of salvation. It's a really great book. He talks about denying of ourselves. He talks about the full salvation of the soul, the spirit, and the body. And he's a, a great, great man of God. Of course, he's deceased now, uh, but he was a great man of God who wrote very uh, prolifically great, great information for the body of Christ to go forth in. So I encourage you, if that's something that's going to bless you, to take a look at that book, Salvation of the Soul. God is good. He's an awesome God. I love you guys. Take care.